Hi, this is John with Performance Plus Tennis, and in today's lesson, I'm gonna reveal three of the most common myths on the serve that hold most players back from achieving their full potential. And when you understand what these myths are and how to solve them, you can achieve your full potential on your serve. Serve myth number one, a phrase that we've heard for years and years, is down together, up together. Coaches are always saying when you start your serve, have your arms go down together, up together. But if you look at players in the modern game, you rarely see that type of serving style to start to serve. Because the problem with that is that when your arms go down together, up together, it really keeps you your shoulders in a horizontal position. So you really don't get into a good strong trophy position where you have a good angle to serve from. So we don't want to go down together, up together. The other problem with this too is that what happens is, is the racket is further advanced into the motion than the tossing hand is so that this is going to have to wait. Unless you're tossing the ball really low, you're going to, you're going to have to have a hitch or a long wait in your motion in order to play the serve, in order to time the ball. So the down together, up together is a myth that doesn't work in the modern game for sure and rarely worked even in the historical game before the modern era. So if you look at most players today, when they start their serve, their hands will move away from each other and they'll move at the same speed, but the tossing hand will begin to rise first while the playing hand is going back, and the end result is that the tossing arm will be higher than the playing arm. And what happens is after you release the ball is the tossing arm continues to rise, and that'll lead you right into a beautiful angle to serve from. And this one will just come up by itself. So it really feels like it's lagging behind and that's gonna help set you up to play a much, much better serve and give you a modern trophy position. Myth number two is the phrase, scratch your back. And this phrase and idea has been around forever as well, scratch your back on the serve. And even today, I have students that come to me who've been coached to scratch their back on the serve and they end up having this ter terrible hitch in their motion and they're stuck in the back scratch position. So when you see players that go and you've been told to put your racket in your back or scratch your back or start with your racket down in your back or get the racket near your back, that is a complete myth. Do not do that. It's going to destroy your serve motion. So what you want to do is you want to really feel as though you're in this trophy position and the racket is away from your back and then as you make your move the racket will fall and rise naturally. If you understand the movement to make out of the trophy position, the swing will become a natural result of the movement and you won't be trying to make a swing. So the idea of putting your racket in your back or trying to make a swing or scratch your back with your racket is just gonna absorb all the power and rhythm out of your swing and ultimately just destroy your serve motion. And myth number three is to serve off of the back leg. And, and so we oftentimes hear coaches talk about and, and teach that you're gonna actually serve with your weight completely on your back leg. And in fact, there's even coaches out there that, that use the idea of a shot put motion to simulate serving. And when you throw a shot put, you really begin with your whole w entire weight on your back leg and your heel is down, your foot is flat on the court. Look at all professional tennis players. There isn't a single tennis player that is serving with their back heel down on the court when they're in the trophy position. In every single case, the back heel has risen. And what that tells me, and what I've really learned over the years, is that in the trophy position, the weight is neutral. So when I'm in this position, I'm ready to make my move, both legs are equally involved in the balance and in the movement and the thrust of my movement up into contact. The idea of being on the back leg and having the heel down and making this feel like a shot put action is really taking you out of alignment. It's a, it's, a, it's a poor balance to swing from, and it does not work. It works for shot putting, but it doesn't work for serving. So make sure that when you're in your trophy position that your back heel is risen, and that's because your, your back hip is gonna be a little bit lower than your front hip because of the angle you're getting into, and yet you've got equal weight distribution and balance on both legs that is key to developing ultimate power on your surf. And myth number four is another phrase and term and idea that's been around forever, and it's the idea of snapping your wrist. And we still hear it today. I have students that come to me that have surf problems, and they say, I say to them, what are you trying to do on their motion? And they say, I'm trying to snap my wrist. My other coach told me to snap my wrist, and so on. But if you look carefully, you don't see snapping the wrist on the serve. You see wrist movement, and I'm gonna show you exactly what that is, but it is not a snap. So what is the exact movement that the wrist makes? Well, 
when you're in your trophy position and you make your move and the racket does its natural fall, it's from here to the top the wrist must move. If all I did was extend from the elbow, the racket would never get to the ball. So we have this movement in here called ulnar deviation where the wrist extends. And that is the extent of the movement. Once you get to the extension, as you're coming in and you're extending up, the shoulder begins to take over and rotate through. But the wrist never really breaks. If it breaks, it's a byproduct of all the energy and effort you're putting into the, into the upward swing. And that momentum has to go somewhere. So the wrist may release and relax a little bit, but it is not snapping to make contact. So the idea of snapping the wrist at the top or flicking the wrist to generate racketed speed is an absolute myth. And if you look at every top server, even in the early parts of the game, all the way through today's best servers, the wrist stays in a pretty neutral position, except for this ulnar deviation right here, right there, and then you come through and the wrist holds as the shoulder takes the swing through the ball. And finally, myth number five, and again, this is a one that's been around forever and ever, and it's the idea of finishing your serve or, or following through on your serve across your body. And so what we end up seeing is players trying to follow through across the body. And what we find is players are trying to come down across, and all we're going to do is impinge the shoulder and weaken the motion. So the reality is the shoulder is actually rotating out and away from the body and then the racket comes down to the side and it may come across, but it only comes across at the bottom of the swing. The ball is long gone, the follow through is complete, and you just have momentum basically to bring the racket back to you to pick it up and carry on. So from a front view, the motion really looks like this. As you're coming up and you play onto the ball, the shoulder rotates away and the racket comes down to the side and ultimately it can come across you, but it is not coming across as part of the downward swing because the shoulder is actually rotating out in a way and then she comes through and comes across at the bottom. So the idea of swinging across the body as a component of the swing, the downward part of the swing, is going to result in injury, weakness in the serve, and it just simply doesn't work. So let that shoulder rotate out and away from the body and ultimately it will come down to your side. If it comes to the front of you, that's fine but avoid the idea that you're gonna follow through across the body. Thanks for watching today's video. If you'd like to learn more, I've got a couple different options for you. We have a playlist here on the YouTube channel that covers almost every aspect of the serve and you can learn more there about how to solve these problems and learn more about how to build a professional quality serve. And if you'd like to dive into your serve even more, I encourage you to click on the link down below and gain access to information on my Serve Foundation course, which has received worldwide acclaim from both coaches and players alike, and have helped hundreds and hundreds of players like you build a professional quality serve. And please like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Turn on your notifications because we're releasing new content weekly, and we don't want you to miss out on our latest instruction to help you build your game. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you in the next lesson.